Hello everyone, my name is Raj and welcome to Teeny Tiny Earth. In today's video, we have a problem to solve in this farmhouse. The overhead tank gets dried very fast because we are now running sprinklers, drip irrigation, this house. So I need to automate this and for that, I have bought this WLC which is the brains which is going to make this all happen. So let's see how I do it. To do the automation of shutting down the motor when the tank is full and switching it on when it is empty, we need two components. One is the brain as I call it. This has WLC and this one does the job of actually shutting down or switching on the motor. And this is a float which actually tells if the tank is empty or full. Before we proceed, let's understand this brain. The brands that I am using is Kheti and since I am in the village area, they use this brand most popularly for all the agricultural lands. But it's the same system that works for all. Right now I am using a motor without starter. Here is the input that is from the mains and this is the output that it goes to the motor. And by default they will definitely give you with the ports closed which you don't need to connect. For the input I have taken it from the main and for the output I have connected to this bulb. This Kheti with WLC which I call the brains actually is intelligent enough to set the current of the motor. It detects it when you first switch it on and it tries to set. It can give you a current level of 1 to 16 amperes and because I have connected a bulb which is less than 1 amperes it will show fault but I will be able to give you a demo of how this works. Then when I do the actual installation we will be able to see how the Kheti WLC works. Apart from that we have the motor on switch, motor off switch. This is to set it in manual mode or an auto mode. If it is in manual mode then you can press the green button or the red button to switch on and switch off the motor. If it is in auto mode then it will try to get information from the float. Let me go to this place and explain why we have these two switches. So we have these three terminals for the upper tank and we have these three terminals for the lower tank. The reason being the upper tank is where we need to fill the water but what if the lower tank is empty? We will have a second float like this which will be connected to the lower tank. So the way that it will work is if both are set in auto it will first check if the lower tank is full then it will check if the upper tank requires water and it will start the motor to send water from the lower tank to the upper tank. But since we are not going to do the lower tank automation I've just jumped all the cables and we will be connecting the upper tank float just to the upper tank terminals and that is why we have these two buttons where this one is for the upper tank and this one is for the lower tank and by default we have set the lower tank to auto. Here I have the float system and as you know when the water is going to rush on top of it because it is filled with air it's going to float and come up to the top and there is a solid piece of ball inside which is uh, moving when we actually change the position. So when it is like this, it is going down, which is not pressing the switch and letting us know that it is in down position. But as the water fills and it comes up, the ball kind of rushes back and it pushes on the switch to let it know that it has changed its position as in the water has filled. Get those informations at the end. Usually a float comes with the three pins. So the black here is going to be the common one and the red and green are going to give normally close or normally open. You don't have to actually get into the nitty gritties of what uh, normally close or normally open is. In my case, if I connect the green and the black wire, in this position the motor gets switched off and in this position the motor gets switched on which is what I don't want. So here's the float and here are those two wires. How did I find out which wire works? So first I will connect the black wire to this middle port because this is common. We don't have to change this and according to the documentation we have to loop the third terminal to the second terminal. So I will do that with this small jumper wire. Now what I did was I connected the green wire to see if at what position this switches on and switches off and it did not work fine for me. So I connected the red wire and found out that this is the right connection to be made. So all the two wires are connected and the third wire is just left as is. Now I'll switch on the system but before that I have set this to manual and I have set this to auto because I want to show you if I press manually the motor what happens. So once I switch on you should be able to see that it, the input voltage is around 226 volts 
and voltage is selected the power is on and right now the motor is off so if i press motor on it immediately switches it on and i can switch it off once the connection is made if i switch it on it again says that the input voltage is 230 volts but you can see now it says the upper tank is full so if i drop it then the upper tank full has gone off and it resets and it starts a timer to check if the float is in off uh, position meaning that the tank is empty and then after the time is run it will start the light as you can see after the time is over the motor get automatically switched on now that's the theory of it let's do the practical implementation by taking it to the tank and installing it before we installation there are different tanks with different sizes so it is important to set the middle weight now you might ask what is the requirement of this middle weight this determines uh, at what level the float is going to stop for example if i set here while the water fills it is going to come like this and the moment the ball hits uh, the switch like here and it is going to inform the wlc to switch off the motor so which means at this level the water is going to get stopped and this is considered as a tank being full and if you want to increase it you have to increase this height a little more you can increase it like this this way if the float comes about to this level then automatically it will stop after setting up the tank here's the final connection that i have made so here's the brains and i have connected it to the mcb so if i shut it down it will go off and i can switch it on that is to do some maintenance work as for the second improvement i have connected the motor to a two pin plug that is because if i at any point want to run the motor i can run it manually because once i set it into auto i am not able to start it by switching it on on so i can plug this to a external power source and can have that running now i connected it so it is checking if the tank is full and it will switch on automatically and that's it now the water tank will always be full next is to automate the drip irrigation i will put a solenoid valve and connect it to a iot device so that from the app i will be able to set a time so whenever the valve opens the water is always available in the upper tank that way the plant always gets its water in the next video i'm going to plant some bamboos this is madi tree which we call in maharashtra there are more flowers which i have kept on the other side i hope to see you in those videos also teeny tiny earth is not dedicated to any such project videos but it's more of my life journey to explain what is happening in this farmhouse that i recently built and i am constantly evolving along with it I hope to see you in the next one also and thank you for staying for so long.